My name is Greg Hoffman, co-owner of Urban Pump Personal Training Studios with my wife, Sharon. We've been in the business for nine years now. I personally have been in the business for almost 30 years, and I've learned a lot during that time. Today's little lecture I'm going to do, mini lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about cellulite. It is a big concern for a lot of women. So anyway, what is, cell, what is cellulite, first of all, and what can be done about it? There are many different <laughs> theories about it. Um, in, any, in any sense, I have my own diet and exercise strategy, and that's what we'll talk about today. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what cellulite actually is. Let me zoom in here. Cellulite is very common in women, and it is not so much in men. One has to wonder why. Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, women have thinner skin than men do to start off with. Men have thick skin, you know that whole thick head, thick skin that <laughs> women complain about men. Well, there's some truth at least to the skin part. I don't know about the thickness in the brains. I hope not. Anyway, we do have thicker skin than women do. The other thing is the underlying support structure for the skin is weaker in women than it is in men. And here's the reason why. There's something that's called the septa, which runs parallel in women and in a crisscross fashion in men. Uh, I really can't draw it out here, but let me try to visually show you what I'm talking about. What they're talking about are the, the, the strands of support that's underneath the skin. For women, those strands run parallel. One here, one here, then one here, then one here. And this is the skin on top, okay? So what happens with those parallel running septa is that as women get older, not so much when they're younger, but as they get older, the skin gets thinner. Uh, it starts sagging in between the septa, okay? So it'll sag and it'll create those pockets that is really what cellulite is, in essence. Men don't have that problem, first of all, once again, they have the thicker skin, but the other thing is their septum doesn't run parallel like a woman's does. Theirs run in a crisscross fashion, okay? So they got it running this way, running this way, and then they have another one here and another one here. So what's happening is because of the way the septa is designed or set up in men, don't know why, but that seems to be the case. It gives their skin a much stronger structure of support. It's kind of like looking at it, the support structure for a bridge. If you have the right support, the right beams in the right place and the right angles, it'll give a lot more support for a bridge than if it, it, it was just kind of put up willy-nilly. Ironically, it's kind of the same thing with the, with the septa for both men and women. The septa for men is just simply tougher and designed to hold up better. Okay? When all that's said and done, then the fat pushes up against the skin, causing the cottage cheese look. So, for women where the septa are running parallel and you get those pockets, what happens is that as women gain fat, it pushes up against those pockets, and that leads to what's the dimpling effect that is very noticeable for most women. The point I want to make about this is in spite of what many people would say, cellulite is not a special kind of fat, nor is there anything that can be done to the skin to strengthen the underlying structure to make it go away. You're kind of stuck with it. That's just the way your skin is, and you just, the way I look at it, the better you understand that, the better your remedy can be, and the more realistic your expectation should be as well when it comes to minimizing your cellulite. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the questionable remedies that are out there. Creams and lotions are used a lot. I don't see how putting a cream on the skin is going to change the septa or make the skin thicker. Or lose body fat for that matter. High tech massage is another one. Deep tissue massage combined with lymph drainage. This is popular. Very popular. Here's the crazy thing, it does kind of work. 
you get done with one of those sessions and you look at your skin and it is much smoother but it only lasts a couple of days and then the whole cottage cheese look comes back again. So you gotta wonder what's the real value of that. There's also light devices where they just light energy to break up the cellulite, kind of like laser light devices. Which can also combine with which they also combine with lymph drainage. So in essence, the uh, light devices and then the tissue massage are kind of basing their practices off the same underlying philosophy. And then the final one that I've found by doing some research is simply the diet and exercise approach. Personally, I do endorse the diet and exercise plan. I think over the long haul, that is your best bet. And you can minimize the amount of cellulite you have. You can't get rid of it completely, but you can really minimize it. And there are two good strategies to do. First of all, simply lose the fat. I'm sure you've been told that before. But at the same time, you're going to want to gain muscle. You combine gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. That's what brings about the changes. And here are the reasons why. Let me go back here. Here are the reasons why in my opinion, why it works so well. You're not going to change the septa. You're not going to change the thin skin. But what's going to happen is that if you add more muscle, then it's going to push up against that skin and kind of round it out a little bit. It's going to give you the tone and definition in spite of the fact that you still have the same septa and the same stretched skin. And then the other thing is when you lose the fat, that also allows that muscle to kind of fill in the gap, if you will, a little bit more, it can give you a smoother look. It can give you a more toned and aesthetic look that you simply can't get just by rubbing your body down with massage or doing any of those other things. You've really got to gain, gain some muscle back in those tissues. Okay? So first of all, what you want to do is eat to lose fat. I'm a big proponent of low-carbohydrate eating for several reasons. One of them, ironically, is it's a good way, it's a good anti-aging diet, but that's a whole nother topic on a whole nother day. Coming back to the main purpose here, one of the reasons why I like it is because you don't have to count calories. As a matter of fact, counting calories, counting calories is not the best way to lose fat because when you start lowering your calories, try to kick up your exercise, guess what? Your appetite's going to go with it. It makes it much more difficult to really keep the calories under control Hard to stick to over the long haul. Low carb eating is it fares much better in that sense. First of all, the good thing about low carb eating is that it doesn't kick in the insulin response. Let me zoom up in here a little bit. See if you can see that. Because it's insulin that actually promotes fat storage. And once again, that's a whole nother topic in and of itself. But the bottom line is this: the more insulin you have running through the body, the more you're telling your body to store fat and to burn sugar, to burn glycogen. You can't get to the fat stores if you always burn sugar. And if your insulin levels are high, that means you got a lot of sugar going through your blood. The body has to get rid of that first. So a good rule of thumb, keep the carbohydrate content. Whoop. Whoop, it's all around me. Okay, back here. So carb content, Good rule of thumb is to keep it tight, 80 grams, 80 grams a day or less for women. Men can handle a little bit more. And actually, if you're pretty lean to begin with, or once you get to the point of, of where you're pretty darn lean, you, you can add some carbs back. You don't have to be radical about it. You can be around 100, 100 to 120 grams a day of carbohydrates and still maintain it. But if you really want to see some fat loss, consistent fat loss over a period of time, try to keep the carbs under 80 grams a day. You also want to eat plenty of good fats, and what I'm talking about there are monosaturated, monounsaturated fats and the saturated fats. Ironically, saturated fats, in my opinion, are good. Research is showing that the saturated fats aren't the villain for heart disease that the doctors have thought for several years. They're not finding it to be great in the battle against heart disease, they're just finding it to be kind of neutral. I like saturated fats along with the monounsaturated fats because one thing is that the brain is made up of 70% fat. So, having 
more fat in your diet really helps keep the brain healthy, and I think saturated fats fit in conjunction with that. Um, and also, the body uses fat for a lot of cellular repair and growth. You've got to have fats. Monounsaturated fats are good. Saturated fats are good. The ones that you want to avoid are the trans fats and the polyunsaturated fats, like vegetable oils, canola oil, corn oil, things along those lines. You really want to avoid those. And the main reason of that, to keep this brief, is that polyunsaturated fats have a lot of omega-6 fatty acids. And for most Westerners, that omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is way out of whack. It should be about a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids that we should be taking in. But with the diet the way it is now, so many um, items, food items that are loaded with vegetable oils, trans fats fit in that too, and a lot of cooking that people do with the vegetable oils, that ratio is way out of whack. It's, it's upwards to 20 to 1 of the ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s, and that's unhealthy. Once again, that's another lecture to get into later on at some other point, but for brevity's sake, understand that it's unhealthy to have a diet high in both trans fats and polyunsaturated fats. You do want to eat fats, but they want to be the good fats. They want to be the monounsaturated fats. A good example is olive oil. Another good example are avocados. And then saturated fats, butter, ghee, ironically, you wouldn't think that they'd be healthy, but they are. And things like coconut oil. Those are the ones I endorse. Okay, now the other piece to it is exercise. Let me zoom you in here a little bit. Okay, what I think is important when it comes to exercise is the kind of program that builds muscle. In other words, strength training. And here are the reasons why. Intense strength training will improve the fast twitch. Well, they'll work both the fast twitch and slow twitch fibers, I should say, but primarily the fast twitch fibers. And the reason why we want to work the fast twitch fibers is those are the ones that can develop, that can reshape, and that can really lay that foundation underneath the septa and underneath the, the sagging skin, the thin skin, to give it a fuller, thicker look. The slow twitch fibers don't do that. You can train slow twitch fibers all you want and not see much change in the body. You've got to get to the fast twitch fibers. Okay, as far as the repetition range when you do strength training, keep it between 8 to 12 repetitions and you should be taking your sets pretty close to fatigue. If you do that and be consistent with it and be progressive with it over time, you do train those fast twitch fibers and they do change shape. The lightweight, high repetition strength training programs that most women do don't work very well. Once again, it's because they don't work the fast twitch fibers, they work more the slow twitch fibers, and some of the intermediate fibers. And let me explain that a little bit. The intermediate fibers are the fibers that have characteristics of both the fast and the slow twitch fibers. They're kind of in the middle. So they have some of the characteristics of the slow twitch to where they, they can have, they, they have endurance, they can last a long time, they work with the aerobic energy system, and yet they also have some of the characteristics of the fast twitch fibers where they can produce more force than the slow twitch fibers in essence, and they can work with the anaerobic energy systems. What's cool about the inter intermediate fibers is that they tend to take on the characteristics of one or the other, more dominantly depending on the type of training program both men and women do. In essence, when somebody does a high rep, lightweight training program, they'll, they'll fatigue the muscle a little bit, they'll get those intermediate fibers firing a little bit, and they'll get some tone and definition, but simply not enough to see the big changes that women want to see. It's much better to train with a higher level of intensity and get those intermediate fibers to take on even more of the characteristics of the fast twitch fibers, at the same time getting to those fast twitch fibers. To finish up this portion of it, cardio training does not work either. It does nothing to change the shape of the body. It's very difficult to lose body fat if you do a lot of cardio training. Ironically, you think it wouldn't, but it does because the body attenuates to it. It gets more efficient at burning its energy if that's all you do. And once again, it doesn't work the fast twitch fibers. As a matter of fact, research shows that if somebody does a lot of cardio training, they can still lose muscle mass because they're not doing anything to tell the body to keep the muscle mass. So I downplay that if you want to see cellulite loss. Okay, so in summation, 
let me wrap it up by saying, first of all, you cannot get rid of cellulite completely. You have it. Women will simply have it more than men. They'll have it as they get older for the reasons explained before. Thinner skin, skin will get even thinner as, as women get older. The sept is still the same. Nothing you can do to change that. But you can minimize the dimpled look rather dramatically. And you can do it with a proper diet. I prefer low carb and proper exercise, and this is the big piece, intense strength training. Got to train hard. You train hard, then you're going to see some shape and loss in that arena. A couple examples, a couple photos here of my wife. Both of these were taken when she was in her 40s. Actually, the bottom one, I should, let me take that back, the bottom one was her when she was in her 40s. The top one was in her 50s. And still doesn't have much, if any, cellulite at all. And that has a lot to do with this training program. So I know it works. Interestingly enough, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go here first of all. About the book. I wrote a book on the topic called Proven Strategies for Losing Cellulite. And the reason I wrote the book, let me zoom this back a little. The reason I wrote the book is because I wrote an article for Hub Pages, oh, about four or five years ago, explaining the training program and nutrition program I used for Sharon. It had so many views, I, I, I just felt that I needed to expand on the topic a little bit more. At this point, at this juncture, I would have to say, I know there's at least 70,000 views, 70,000 people have read that article in and of itself, which is telling me that there is a big need, a big desire to figure out what the heck women can do. That is my solution. So I wrote a book about it, Proven Strategies for Losing Cellulite, and what I did in this book is I took three women through a three-month diet and exercise program to see if indeed we can lessen the cellulite, and we were successful doing so. So I have in there the exercise program, the diet program, and I have in there all of their workouts and all the trials and tribulations and struggles they had along the way. They all lost weight. They all lost inches. They've all reshaped their body. And they've lost a fair amount of cellulite. In any case, that's all in the book. It's on Amazon. Was it improving strategies for losing cellulite? If you want further information, feel free to contact us. You can do a free 15-minute phone consultation with me. All you have to do is give me a text. Say, hey, I want to talk to you about whatever issue you have as far as health and fitness, and we can talk. Phone number 303-587-0149. Let me zoom this up closer so you can see it. 303-587-0149. For nine. Okay, so that's it. Once again, my name is Greg Hoffman, co-owner of Urban Pump, developer of the High Strength Training Program that was used in this book. Thank you.